Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial and in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, believe it or not, I got the idea for this tutorial from LinkedIn of all places. And there was a great thread on LinkedIn with editors sharing their shortcuts. And I thought this would be a very interesting lesson to do, sort of a power user's uh, look at your keyboard settings and you know, a lot of editors talk about how they have their keyboards, you know, completely 100% customized and you know, they've got it right down to the last key and they've changed everything up. And in this tutorial, I thought what we would do is we would talk about, uh, we'll sort of go into a little bit more depth about my, you know, particular keyboard settings, why I like them the way that they are and why they help me get my job done super fast. And hopefully it's going to throw a few ideas out there, you know, for you. And maybe you, you might want to actually take some of these that I've incorporated into my workflow and possibly incorporate them into your workflow flow to help you take things to the next level and get that job done just that little bit faster. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Symphony. Obviously, alt tab for all my Windows friends out there. And the first thing I'm going to talk about, believe it or not, is the fact that I am a big believer in not really changing your keyboard settings at all. Now, I know you, most editors are probably thinking to themselves, well, that's crazy. How can you even say that? Well, let me sort of tell you where I'm coming from with this. I sort of come from, you know, the freelance world. I mean, obviously now I'm one of the senior editors at DG Maijo in Toronto, but, you know, for an extended period of time at the start of my career and even sort of, you know, up until I started working at DG Maijo, I was a freelancer. And going from location to location is great. And to be perfectly honest, I, I really, you know, I didn't really carry my keyboard settings with me. Now, most people might think that that's crazy. And the reason I didn't carry them with me was because really my keyboard doesn't need to be that customized for me to get up and running. The problem is, first of all, there's two sort of things going on here. One is, is that if you're a freelancer, you need to be taking your settings around with you everywhere you go. Now, if there's ever an issue, something ever comes up and you have a super customized keyboard and you can't get your settings onto someone's system for some reason or another, you're really going to have to get in and attempt to customize that keyboard before you start working because you're not going to be able to remember where everything is. And guess what? Time is money. For me, if I need to sit down and start working right away by not really altering the keyboard that much at all, I can really sit down and start editing and as I go, add in all of my little keyboard shortcuts because really the only thing that I have mapped to the keyboard is really the function keys. I have a few others mapped in there, but really it's only the function keys at the top that I have mapped, that I have anything mapped to. So like I said, I can sit down, really start working instantly where other people have to come in. Oh, okay, I have to go in and can I put my user settings in there? Oh, okay, oh wait, there's a problem with that. Oh, you know what, my user settings have corrupted. You can see where I'm sort of going with this is that it's much better to sit down, create a new user, boom, start going right away as opposed to, you know, you got to take your user settings, you got to put them in there. And then if you run into a problem, like I said, you're really in big trouble. Okay. So what I want to do here is I want to open up my user settings and I want to show you my, actually my keyboard settings. and I want to show you how I have them laid out. And then we're going to talk about a few things that I have laid out inside of my composer window to help speed up my workflow as well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to navigate over to my settings and I'm going to come down to, like we just said appropriately enough, the keyboard settings. So here are my keyboard settings. And like I said, really everything in here not the function keys, everything in here pretty much looks exactly the same. Now remember, inside of Media Composer and Symphony, you can really only adjust the keyboard and the shift keyboard. You notice if you hit control or if you hit option or if you hit to command, the keyboard doesn't change. Really only holding shift on Mac and Windows will give you the option to add more keyboard shortcuts to your keyboard. Now even then you'll see that really I have the function keys mapped and I really only have F2 or shift F2 uh, mapped as well, but we'll get to what that is in just a second. Now, the very first key that I have mapped in here is F2. Now, the reason I have F2 mapped and I don't have F1 mapped is because in most cases on Windows machines, F1 is mapped to be the help menu. That's why I don't have F1 mapped to anything. I always leave it blank. F2, in this case, I have, match, or I have mapped to BC. Now, what exactly is BC? What BC stands for is batch capture. Now, where I work, like I said, at DG Maijo, we do a lot of digitizing. We digitize a lot of tapes. So in many cases, I'm going to need to re-batch capture tapes. So by having this mapped to my keyboard, I can simply select some clips that are offline inside of one of my bins and simply hit F2, and the system is going to prompt me for what tape it needs to start recapturing. Now, if you do a lot of importing, you might want to have this set to be batch import instead. That way, select multiple clips, hit F2, you're ready to batch import those 
All Symphony will need to know is that if it doesn't know where the links are to those clips, just direct it to where they are. But if they're in the same place, Symphony will just import them for you right away. Now, the next thing that I have mapped to my keyboard is F3, which in this case is the audio mixer. Why do I have the audio mixer mapped? Well, I have the audio mixer map because I use it so often. Now, I have previous lessons in our Learn Avid's Media Composer tutorial series all about audio mixing where I do talk about the audio mixer, but I just wanted to mention in here that I do have F3 mapped to be that audio mixer, so I always have it at my disposal right away. Now, F4 I have mapped as a marker or a locator. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come back to my bins here for a second. I'm just going to open my clips here. Let me see what I have in clips. Uh, nothing that I need right now. What I'm going to do is just drop down other bins. I'm just simply going to open Motocross here. And I, for some reason, have a sequence in here. So let's just delete that. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to call up a clip here. It doesn't matter which one. I'm just going to double click on it here. Because you know what? I have a problem with this clip. I got a big problem with it, let me tell you. And I have a big problem with it right about here. And that is that this landing, this is this is terrible. I would never use this landing here. But what I need to do is I need to tell the editor that's coming in after me not to use this landing because it's terrible. So what I'm going to do is simply hit F4 on my keyboard to call up my markers, or some people, like I said, refer to it as locators. And I'm just going to say, this landing is horrible. Don't use it. And I'm going to say, OK. Now, you're going to see there is the marker telling the editor that this landing is horrible. Don't use it. And the best part is that this is now clip-based. So if I come to a different clip here, there we go, different clip. And I come back to this clip right here and double click on it. There's that marker. And what's going to happen is, is that if the editor selects this area of this shot and edits it into a new sequence, you're going to see that this marker is attached to this clip. So it will always be in the timeline. Oh, I wonder what this marker says. Oh, this marker says that this landing is horrible. Don't use it. But now here's another big question. What if I happen to have multiple markers. Well, I can also get in and change the color of these markers as well. And the great thing is, is that I can actually navigate right up here to Tools, and I can just come down to the Markers section here. And I can open the Markers window and see all of the different markers. So for example, if I wanted to use this shot from this point forward, I can add that in there, and you're going to see it's going to be updated immediately over here in the markers. And I can also simply double click on the marker that I want to jump to, and Media Composer or Symphony will jump to it just like that. So, markers is something I also use all the time. F4 on my keyboard, and you can see markers are very versatile, very easy to get in, and very easy to use. Okay, now I've decided that I want to do a visual effect on this shot. So, what I'm going to do is hit Command and 8 on the Mac, Control and 8 for all my Windows friends out there. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come down and I'm going to select, uh, let's just choose the blend category. I'm going to choose 3D warp here. I'm just going to drag and drop it right down here onto my shot. And let's just take this. And I think what we're going to do here is let's just adjust the scaling, shrink it down. And let's just ju adjust the rotation a little bit here. Very cool. I think that's a little bit too much. Let's just adjust the Y rotation here. Very cool. So I'm going to show this to the client. The client says, wow, you know what? That is awful. I would never use that. That's terrible. You need to take this off your shot. It's terrible. So what I have in this case right after F4 on my keyboard is F5, which is my shortcut to simply remove an effect. Why? Because I find myself removing effects all the time. And the cool thing is, is that I can actually use it not only on clips like or not only on effects like the 3D warp that I just had on there, but what I can also do is throw a dissolve in here. And if the client looks at this and says, you know what, Kev, no, no dissolve here. Get rid of that. Oh, yeah, you know what? No problem. F5 on my keyboard. Now I'm just going to undo what I just did here. I'm just going to step into effects mode, shift and Y on my keyboard. Because you'll see that really when you're in here, how are you going to get in? You know, I, I don't see remove effect here anywhere. The only place to really find remove effect is you can find it right here at the top of your timeline. Or what you can always do is navigate right up here to my little hamburger here in between my insert and overwrite buttons, and you can find it right there. Very cool. Okay, so the next shortcut that I have on my keyboard is another one that I use all the time. And what I'm going to do here is just undo what I just did because I want to remove that effect. And you know what I've realized? I've realized that with this first shot, I actually want to have it go black and white for part of the shot. And then I want to have it come back to color. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to remove. Let's actually undo what I just did. I'm just going to remove this second shot here. And let's just extend the first shot down. Let's just extend it down quite a bit here. 
And like I said, what I want to do is right about here, I want to have this go to black and white. So what I actually need to do is I need to add an edit at this point. Let's just say right about here. Now, in most cases, a couple ways you can do this. You'll see that I have the add edit shortcut right here, or I have it right up here in the hamburger dropdown as well. You'll see that it's right there. But I like to have it actually mapped to my keyboard. With a simple F6 on my keyboard, I can add an edit in there. I can add an edit in there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to come up to the image section of the effects palette. I'm going to come down to a simple color effect here. And what I'm going to do is just simply step into effects mode, shift and Y on my keyboard. And of course, what I want to do is I want to come down, just take the saturation out all together. Just put a couple dissolves in here. Just apply it to transitions in and out. And guess what I've just done with that add edit? I've now got it going from color to black and white with add edit again coming back to color. So again, F6, add edit, a fantastic, fantastic shortcut. Now here's a big one for you. Now my next two sort of go hand in hand, F7 and F8. F7 I have for match frame. So let's just say hypothetically client says, I really need to know, can you show me this shot? I want to see what else we have going on in this shot because we really don't have it going any farther than this right here. What a lot of editors will do is they'll get in, they'll start trying to trim things down and say, well, this is what I have, you know, after this guy almost sort of goes out of the frame. Don't need to do any of that. What I'm going to do is simply hit F7 on the keyboard, which is my shortcut for match frame. What's going to happen is, is that Symphony is going to take this clip exactly where it is. It's going to open the clip, the original clip over here in the preview window, and it's going to take me right to that frame that I'm on right now. So now I can say to the client, oh, by the way, you want to know what was after this point? We'll take a look. This is what happens. Very cool. Now the client says, I don't know, you know what, I really need to, I think I need to find another shot for this. Now what I'm going to do here, just for the purposes of showing this to you, is I'm just going to open my sequences bin here for one second, and I'm going to take my sequence and put it in there. I'm going to close this mode across for a second, you're going to see why. Let's do that again. I'm going to hit F7 to match frame that clip. There we go. Now the client says, you know what, I think I'm going to need another mode across shot. Can you, you know, find another shot for me and stick it in its place? you know what, I need to know where this motocross footage came from because I don't know. Well, all I have to do is simply with F7, which is for match frame, I'm going to use my shortcut for find bin. Now, find bin is great. Whatever clip you have selected, all you have to do now is hit F8 on the keyboard, and it's going to open that bin and show me exactly where that clip is. And I know that all my motocross footage is inside this one bin, so I can simply go through and pick another shot. F7 and F8, match frame fine bin, I use them in conjunction all the time. I must use that shortcut a hundred times a day when I'm working. It's fantastic. Okay, so now let's talk about F9 on my keyboard. Okay, now for me, F9 is another one that I use all the time. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to remove these effects here. There we go. Using, of course, F5, my shortcut on the keyboard. I'm going to add some new video tracks by simply hitting Command and Y on the Mac, Control and Y for all my Windows friends out there. And what we're going to do here is I'm just going to create a quick composite. All I'm going to do is just grab some other motocross footage here. doesn't even really matter what it is. We're just going to drop it down into different layers here. And we'll just grab a couple others at random here. Very cool. Let's actually hope our guy comes onto the frame here, which he does not. There we go. We'll just actually take it right from there. I think that's a little bit better anyways. Very nice. Okay, and our last shot here. Uh, let's just jump up to F4. You remember I have auto patching turned on. That's why when I select the layer that I want to go to and I deselect the one that I'm currently on, my video jumps to it immediately. And let's just pick another shot here. I think that's probably too short. Yeah, sure, why not? We'll just pick this one here. And again, I'm going to hit Command and 8 on the Mac, Control and 8 on Windows. We're just going to go back to the Blend category. I'm just going to grab 3D Warp here. And all we're going to do is I'm just going to repo or reposition, not repossess, our layers here. And I'm just going to position them in 3D space. And all I'm going to do is just take the same effect. I'm going to drag and drop it onto each layer. So basically, it's just going to create the same effect. And what we're going to do is we're just going to, like I said, reposition everything here. So I'm just going to position this layer over here. We'll position this layer. Yeah, sure, why don't we sort of make a square out of it? Why not? Position that over there. And now what I need to do is I need to transition from these shots here into the sort of before and after. 
Now, what most people think is you're going to come in, okay, I'm just going to put dissolves in everything. But you know what? It gets to be a bit messy, and I like to really have my timeline nice and organized. Plus, I might have other things going on with these shots, you know, effects and all that type of stuff. And what I need to do is just be very simple, keep everything in one track. That's how I like to work. So what I do in this case is what some people do is they'll do a video mix down. And we talked about this in a previous tutorial, video mix down versus collapses. I like to use collapses because they're non-destructive. What I'm going to do is simply use my shortcut for collapse, which is... F9 on the keyboard. You'll see now that everything has been collapsed down into one layer, but if I want to see what's going on in this layer, no problem. I can simply double click on it. I can see the contents of that layer. What I'm going to do now is simply mark an in point at the beginning, mark an out point at the end, and I'm just going to come up. I'm going to put a dissolve in here, and I'm just going to say apply to all transitions into out, say go, and guess what I now have? I now have one transition into that composite. The other thing that's important to keep in mind is that depending on how fast your system is, I'm just going to undo everything I just did here. Depending on how fast your system is, that if you add dissolves in here, that's going to add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dissolves in here. That's eight, or actually four real time and four real time effects that have to be played back going into real time effects that depending on how fast your system is, you might not be able to play back without rendering. Guess what? Doing things this way, if I select this layer here again, I'm just going to collapse everything, F9 on my keyboard. I can now simply just put in one dissolve at the beginning, one dissolve at the end, just like such. And I'm pretty sure that I'll be able to play this all back in real time here. Look at that. Very cool. Okay, so I think that's a good place to wrap up part one of our look at our power settings inside of Media Composer and Symphony. We've talked about a lot of great keyboard shortcuts that I hope you're going to be able to take and use in your editing workflow. Now coming up in part two, we're going to wrap up our look at the keyboard and then I'm also going to show you some shortcuts uh, that I have mapped to the composer window that, you know, to be perfectly honest, I could have them on the keyboard, but I've always had them on the composer window ever since I started editing. And you know what? It hasn't impacted the speed of my workflow at all. So if you've got any questions, you've got any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.